When Fritz Berneger began making sausage on this farm nearly half a century ago, he used the traditional recipes he had learned as an apprentice in Salzburg, Austria. Go to any backyard barbecue, New Year's Eve party, or grocery store, and you'll see the name, Hillshire Farm. But what about that name? Is there really a Hillshire Farm? Hillshire Farm is a billion dollar brand that was actually started more than 75 years ago by an immigrant named Fritz Berniger. Fritz and Armella Berniger's son, Gary, was the company president for 25 years. Wow, things have changed a little bit, huh? Yeah, this bring back, it brings back a lot of memories, Deborah. It's a, a lot of trips down this hallway. I was just looking at the uh, picture, the memory wall over there, and saw a picture of the old plant uh, with the stockyards uh, in the front, and then you walk past the stockyards to get to the office. Your dad came here as an immigrant from Austria. Mm -hmm. He's 20-something years old. Yes. So he was a butcher. He knew the meat business. Well, he was trained as an apprentice and uh, as a sausage maker and butcher in the old country, yes. Within three years of crossing the Atlantic, Fritz landed in the small town of New London, Wisconsin. There, he met Billy Schmidt, and within six months, they were in business together. Well, he started the quality meat markets. It was a grocery store downtown. I think they just started with one. And he had this tiny little shack, really, that he butchered a cow in or a pig in once in a while for the meat market, and that's how, how it started. Was he a natural businessman? He was a natural worker. He loved to work, and uh, hard work hours didn't mean anything to him. And uh, I think he grew into being a businessman, but uh, he started out being trained uh, with the habits and the skills necessary to do the job. Fritz's wife, Armella, also played an important role in the growth of the business. They got along well. They were a great team. He was the plant guy and she was the office gal, and uh, together they built the business. When the farmers would come in, she would pay them for bringing in their cow or their pigs or whatever they brought in. And she really was a professional woman probably before her time, when women were mostly home. She was running the, you know, helping run the business. Eventually, Quality Markets expanded to two stores and a slaughterhouse outside of town. At that time, they had four people working there. They just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And during the war, they really, uh, they sold a lot of meat to the stores in Appleton. When they originally started, they did all the killing for their own stores. And during the years that they had meat rationing, Maybe they did cheat a little, but uh, killed a little more than they should have. But so they did. Everybody, they weren't alone. I mean, they were feeding people. That's what they were doing. Hillshire had quality, and also they had price. They were very, very competitive. To this day, I can't find sausage like we used to have. I hate to say that. They, um, but their, their quality was excellent. Up here in Wisconsin land, Polska sausage is so grand. Hillshire Farm, yeah, that's the brand. Hillshire Farm. People like it, yes they do. He think you will like it too. Hillshire Farm, from us to you. Hillshire Farm. In 1953, Billy and Fritz dissolved their partnership. Billy took the retail, which would later be sold to Piggly Wiggly. Fritz took the processing plant. The current Hillshire plant is located on that same original location. The name Hillshire Farm sounds so quaint, so lovely. Is there really a Hillshire Farm? Well, yeah, we're on the farm. This is the farm, and uh, I guess uh, the livestock are gone, but uh, we had a barn in the hillside. It's a farm, but it really wasn't a hill. It wasn't called Hillshire Farm, really. No, it wasn't. At that time, it was Quality Packing House Incorporated, and meat products, sausage, everything was sold bulk and behind the service counter. The butcher was behind the counter waiting on the trade. I said, hey, we've, we've got to find uh, a brand name for our quality packing house product. The plant was on the side of a hill called a hillside brand. <laughs> it wasn't rocket science. So I hillside, guess. hillshire, very close. Turns out a different company had already registered the name Hillside nationally. So the company went with Hillshire and soon became a big employer in New London. What kind of a boss was your dad? What kind of a relationship did he have with the employees? He was tough. My dad was always quoted as saying, don't just stand there, do something. <laughs> but he was respected. 
because he worked right alongside with them. In fact, he worked harder than anybody. The month of July in 1963 I started, about the 13th of July. And I worked here now 47 years. Fritz could do everything. He could do anything. Uh, they were both very visible people, Fritz especially in the plant. Uh, he would be known to just step up to the line right next to uh, everyone else and pitch in and get the day's work done. He wanted to make sure that everything was up to snuff. They always were for quality. I think that's what it said, quality packing house. Hillshire was granted federal meat inspection in 1969 so its products could be sold across America. Next came the merger with Consolidated Foods in 1971. They acquired us for one reason only, because we were, I think, pretty good at making natural casing sausages. They were not in that business. And they came in here, asked us to work with them in developing a, a smoked sausage. And that's when smoked sausage was born, really, was 1971, uh, at, at the, after, the, after the merger. Despite their huge success, Fritz and Armella remained grounded in family and community. Fritz and Armella are, were pretty modest people. Was it love at first sight when you met that fellow? Well, it might have been, but I think it was, uh, we had a courtship of about three years because we couldn't afford to get married. <laughs> when the Berningers were running it, uh, it was very small town and, and uh, had that feel of, you know, hands-on ownership and they were very involved in the community, they were involved in the Chamber of Commerce. Everybody knew them, but they were friends with people. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't like we're up here and you're down here, or any of that kind of stuff. You know, my mother was on every committee in town, I think, and my dad, too, who served, and they really thought that you should be part of your community, and they worked on boards, they raised money for every cause there was. The members of the Wisconsin Legislature, on the motion of Senator Large, co-sponsored by Representative Byers, under joint rule, salute Fritz Berniger on the occasion of naming Thursday, March 29, 1979, as Fritz Berniger Day in New London, Wisconsin, signed by several of your friends in the legislature. You had a huge impact in this area. You were a big employer uh, of folks here. How worried were you as you were growing that you were going to lose that touch? Even though we grew and we had a lot more employees, we were still a family-oriented business. Uh, my dad and I and my mother were here. My uh, brother-in-law worked in the business. It was big, but it was still a community, uh, well-knit, well uh, I think well-respected uh, organization because everybody uh, was on a first-name basis. Wow, look at this. <laughs> you never know what's going to show up, huh, Marty? Wow, so you remember this gentleman, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. Was he a tough boss? Oh, yeah. No, I mean, he was a good guy. The Berniger family were very good people. Very good you can tell me the real truth now, because he's not working you, here anymore. I'm going to tell you the honest <laughs> truth. If the Berniger started a plant across the road today, I'd go over there tomorrow and work for him. Like... Throughout their growth as a company, quality was still a key aspect of the product and innovation a source of pride. When you look at some of the things that are really just like milestones for us, the cocktail smokies, the natural casing smoked sausage links, then it was the six ounce deli select lunch meat that reinvented the category. 10 years later, we revolutionized the business by inventing the tub lunch meat. So we've got high credibility with, with innovation. We introduced a, what we call a flavor seal package which was taking a loop of sausage and vacuum packaging it so that it was protected and not simply overwrapped at that time uh, where oxygen and water loss would uh, deteriorate the product. And then in the mid 80s, we developed the easy open package where we could actually take the package and pull it apart so that people didn't have to use a knife to open the package. That cut down on our mail considerably because we had a lot of mail where people cut their hands trying to get into our package. Even as it expanded, the Hillshire Farm brand was built on consumer trust in the quality and consistency of its products. Well, we used good quality products, beef and pork. We knew what our spices were, and those were quality controlled. The government had standards on fat content and our fat content was lower than what was required. 
and we maintained it lower. We didn't try to make a product that was cheap. The company's rapid growth to become a national brand was also fueled by its advertising. Hillshire Farm makes polska kielbasa from the same old world recipe my mother used. Early ads focused on quality, taste, and farm heritage. Well, come on in. I want to share a secret with you. The Hillshire Farm man channeled Fritz's spirit while embodying the values of the company he created. These hand-trimmed lean cuts are the secret. He even spoke with an accent, paying tribute to the brand's European roots. In the 90s, Hillshire Farm shifted gears, infusing humor into its ads, including a campaign with Home Improvement's Richard Karn. We're gonna go through a lot of toothpicks. And more recently, the now iconic Go Meat ads. Hillshire Farm, Go Meat! As Hillshire Farm drove the growth of the category, the level of competition also rose. While the company's advertising has changed over the years, one thing hasn't, the commitment to employee and food safety. Glasses, helmet, this is, safety's a big deal here. Yes, it is, okay. both food safety and uh, personal safety. How much of this are you making every day, every few hours? These lines run 9,500 uh, pieces a minute. A minute? So you can, on any given six weeks, we run six days, We'll put out in excess of two million units. Wow. This is a world-class operation that you're seeing here. Do you think people still think of Hillshire Farm as that small company years ago? Maybe they didn't know the Berniggers, but they knew that it was a small company in the Midwest. Do you think people still sort of expect that from this I hope particular so. company? I hope they do, and I think you know part of uh, part of our opportunity is to make sure that people can connect with that original vision and the heritage of the organization. Um, because uh, the opportunity for us is um, to keep that small spirit alive. Nearly 80 years after it was founded, Hillshire Farm remains a trusted brand, providing families across America with wholesome quality meats at affordable prices. From our friends at, at Hillshire Farm, they hooked us up with an enormous amount of a brand new product line for them. And Hillshire continues to introduce new products, flavors, and meal solutions for consumers changing lifestyles. As a billion dollar brand, Hillshire Farm still gives back to communities across the nation. The brand is a category leader with a dedicated and passionate team of employees. While a lot has changed as we've expanded over the last 80 years, uh, some things haven't, and that's the commitment to quality and the commitment to that great flavor. What goes into a good sausage? Good materials and, uh, and, the, and good people producing it, that's the key.